Most gun guys have never heard of the Davis gun, but it is an innovative and obscure design that shouldn't be overlooked. The Davis recoilless gun, created by U.S. Navy Commander Cleland Davis in 1912, was far ahead of its time. It looks like something out of a steampunk sci-fi story and received a patent in August 1914, the same month that World War I began. The Davis gun design included a single chamber and two equal barrels pointing in opposite directions. One barrel fired the explosive projectile while the other ejected an equal counterweight of grease and lead shot. Both loads were fired by the same explosive charge, resulting in no recoil and the barrel remaining in place. The Davis gun was patented as the C. Davis aeroplane gun and was among the earliest forms of airborne artillery. Davis applied for the patent on August 22, 1911, ahead of the first test firing of a machine gun from an aircraft on June 7, 1912. During World War I, aircraft were increasingly armed with weapons, including the Davis gun. The Royal Naval Air Service ordered different calibers of the Davis gun from the General Ordnance Company in Connecticut. The Davis gun had a maximum range of about 8,000 yards and a muzzle velocity of nearly 1,200 feet per second. Accurate fire could be achieved at up to 2,000 yards, causing considerable damage. The blast from the Davis gun could easily damage aircraft, so they were modified with light alloy plating for protection. The British used the Davis gun to target Zeppelin bombers and U-boats. The weight of the gun was a challenge, and in-flight reloading was difficult. The gun was mounted on Handley Page 0-100 bombers and Royal Aircraft Factory R.8 bombers, as well as Airco DH.4 light bombers. The U.S. Navy also mounted the Davis gun on experimental floatplanes and flying boats for anti-submarine patrol missions. The Navy used a .30 caliber Lewis machine gun to fire spotting rounds for the gunner. British experiments with the Davis gun ended after World War I, while American tests continued until at least 1921. The Davis gun was largely forgotten after World War I but I found a complimentary review of the weapon in the U.S. Navy Department's report titled Navy Ordnance Activities, World War 1917-1918, delivered on May 1, 1920. The gun was designed for anti-submarine warfare and was a radical departure from previous types of guns. It featured a rear charge that prevented recoil force from being transmitted to the mount. The gun was also equipped with a Lewis gun mounted above the Davis gun barrel to facilitate aiming. An incident off Wexmouth, England, in September 1918, highlighted the potential value of the Davis gun for destroying submarines. Flying boats used for anti-submarine patrol were fitted to carry this gun, but none were sent abroad up to the time of the armistice. <laughs>